Acid reflux that isn't acid? Yes. You've got the burning, you've got the indigestion, you've got the nausea, but it's not coming from acid in your stomach, it's actually coming from bile from your gallbladder. And the bile is very irritating, it causes a lot of inflammation, it very much disrupts your gut function, and the problem is it can really be misdiagnosed as acid reflux, and then you're not going to get well because you're, you're not being treated correctly. So let's dive into how you know you have this and what you can do about it. We'll start with the symptoms, some of which I mentioned. You've got burning, you've got nausea. Sometimes this is especially after a fatty meal or a larger meal. Uh, you can have a bitter taste in your mouth or even at the back of your throat. Nighttime reflux. You could have already been diagnosed with gastritis or esophagitis. So I'm not saying that acid reflux and bile reflux don't tend to go together because they absolutely can. But bile reflux is, is its own entity and, and you really need to understand the difference so that you can be cared for correctly. So what happens with bile? Bile is very um, alkaline. So you've got acid, right? And on the other spectrum, you've got alkaline. Uh, but but al something that's highly alkaline, like a detergent, can be just as caustic or just as irritating to your tissues as something that's highly acidic. Now, your stomach's a bag of acid. It's supposed to be a bag of acid. Therefore, acid to your stomach is not irritating. But when acid goes up your esophagus, you know it, right? Because acid is not supposed to be bathing your esophagus. Same thing with bile. Bile is produced by your liver and then the, the gallbladder is a little uh, holding uh, storage unit for bile. And then when food is leaving your stomach, and especially a fatty uh, a meal containing fats, then the gallbladder squeezes down and secretes bile into your upper small intestine. Now, quick anatomy, you've got your stomach, which is a bag, and when it's done churning your food around, it squeezes its contents out into your small intestine, which is about 20 feet long. So the stomach is squeezing its contents out, and the gallbladder is squeezing the bile out and they both meet in this upper small intestine. So again, the small intestine is, is very happy receiving bile because it's supposed to. But what happens when there's a lot of pressure and you get bile going into the stomach and then up into the esophagus? The bile is just as caustic or irritating to the esophagus as the stomach acid is in a different way, in a different pH, one's alkaline, one's acid. But if anything, the bile is even, is even more caustic. So what does it do? It actually, we talk a lot on this channel about hiatal hernia and acid reflux. Uh, but if you're new to the channel, your esophagus, which is the tube that connects your mouth down to your stomach, that's how everything gets down there. Um, it has things called sphincters, which is just another name for a valve. And it's very intelligent because what's the direction everything should travel in the gut? top down. There's not supposed to be any reflux. Nothing's supposed to go the wrong way. And these valves help ensure that that happens because as it detects food or beverages coming, it opens, lets them pass, and then closes off. And there's a pressure to keep everything down, not go back the other way. So what bile can do is it can actually weaken the sphincter uh, connecting your stomach into your esophagus and even the upper sphincter, you've got two in the esophagus, such that things more easily go in the wrong direction. So that's one thing that it does. Um, the other thing is actually it's, it's irritating to the nerves themselves. So this is very interesting um, because what happens is that nerves become sensitized. It's almost like you get a bad sunburn. You know, if you've ever had a bad sunburn, even air hurts cold water hurts, anything. So your, your skin is sensitized because you got this bad burn. So the burn of, of uh, bile is, is the same and it's sensitizing the nerves. And so what happens is you as a patient are complaining of acid reflux, you think it's acid because you're feeling this burning and, and you have the nausea and the indigestion and you've got this bitter taste, all things that can mimic acid. And so 
you're being uh, treated one for acid reflux which is not going to work because you don't have it but also uh, you know your your doctor they can do they can do an endoscopy or um, an ENT can you know your nose throat doctor can look into your throat and say it doesn't look that bad and it's and they're they're not missing it it's because your nerves have gotten so sensitized it takes very little bile to really have you feel very irritated so I hope I've made that clear um, the other thing that bile does is it slows down motility so this is another integral part of how our gut works you have this movement this almost snake-like movement is called peristalsis but as we swallow, the esophagus is going like this, moving things down. Then the stomach churns them around. Everything has a timing and a motion. Then it gets into the small intestine. Again, that snake-like motion, moving everything all the way down till you excrete and you have a bowel movement. There's this motility that has to happen. Well, bile can slow down that motility. So then you get something called stasis, which just means something sitting there instead of moving the way it should. And with that stasis, that slowed motility, now bad organisms reproduce themselves because they're not getting pushed along and destroyed and and they uh, it's like stagnant water you know here I'm in Florida so you know if you <laughs> but there's a lot of places that have mosquitoes certainly um, but where do mosquitoes love stagnant water right so they're happily multiplying so you can think about that with your gut so these bad guys are happily multiplying because there's stasis there's lack of motility it's stagnant um, so then you get into risk for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth called SIBO and it's just making a mess out of your gut. It's fixable. It's fixable naturally, but you have to understand first of all, you know, what's happening to you and you can be swallowing Tums or, or being prescribed a proton pump inhibitor. It's not going to do anything for this. In fact, it's just going to make it worse because it's treating the wrong thing and the decreased acid in your stomach is only going to lead to more inefficient digestion and, and off we go. So um, the key here is to know what it is and then basically rebuild the gut. Now I'm not saying that that's difficult because it's not, but it does take some time. So it's this seeing what it is from a nervous system, vagus nerve, from a digestion, from a food sensitivities, from a, you know, like what overwhelmed the gallbladder and the small intestine and the stomach and the esophagus, what was the, what was sort of the trigger or triggers, plural, that's what we have to look at. And again, it's, it's not difficult, but it's got to be systematic to really get the job done. Otherwise, we're looking at losing your gallbladder, and that creates an another whole host of problems that we would like to avoid. And of course, without optimal gut health, it's impossible to be healthy. So that's just true, but again, not hard to fix. That's why we're here. Uh, so if you enjoyed this information, if you found it helpful, um, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're trying to increase our subscribers so that more people can get exposed to this information and, and know the choices that they have to improve their health. And you can give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and we'll talk soon.